I call Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I'll, I'll start on the police, Policing Cost Recovery Amendment Bill at the conclusion, actually, of the regulatory impact statement, which says currently police are unable to charge for most of the functions designated under the Policing Act, except for in certain circumstances, such as uh, the recovery of uh, licensing fees for, uh, for, for the uh, firearms. But this means that police have limited or no control over demand-driven services and are unable to expand their resources to meet expanding demand. Well, it, it just seems strange to me that if there's expanding demand, then there should be an expanding budget to go with that expanding demand. But as uh, my colleague Phil Goff has, has said, that the, uh, the, the police budget has actually been cut. In fact, in, in Budget 2014, the police received significant cuts. The uh, output expenses for police were reduced from $1.503 billion to $1.461 billion. That's over $40 million in cuts this year. And these cuts are putting real strain on the police force. And I've just heard Mike Saban say morale in the police force is, is up there. The reality is, Mr Speaker, that the average monthly resignations uh, are under national of police have skyrocketed compared to under Labor, going from 14.2 resignations a month in 2009 to 50.7. 50.7 uh, police resign a month in 2013, that was. Mr Speaker, so to claim that uh, morale in the police force is actually on the rise is actually a misnomer because, because up in the north there, Mr. Uh, Mr Speaker, I've got uh, family in the police, I've got friends in the police. I've, in fact, I've been contacted by policemen who are concerned about their jobs and, in fact, their station's been closed, as Phil Goff had, had mentioned. Uh, they, they rang me, um, not, obviously not wanting to be named or anything like that, to say that they're really concerned about small police stations, such as Kawakawa, where I was born and bred, uh, and worried about uh, their jobs. And the, the budget cuts are one of the big uh, drivers of the strain uh, on, on police. Uh, and those cuts, as Phil Goffer said, it cuts the core operating expenditure. Uh, for example, $3.5 million cut to general crime prevention, $7 million cut to investigations, $7 million cut to primary responses. As uh, Phil Goff said, you know, the old uh, uh, sliding ranch slider door is, um, has been broken into, but because the police are under strain, there's uh, so many of them re resigning every month that there's fewer of them to go out and, and do those investigations uh, in a timely manner. And also, another cut of $10 million to, to road policing. So these are the core functions of the police which have been put at risk as, as a result of those cuts, Mr Speaker. But the Minister was right. There, there is um, some public appetite for um, uh, recouping of, of some costs, but as... You know, and I'll just go through a few of them. So there were 102 submitters who responded to the question of whether police should be able to recover the costs. Uh, of certain services, 66% broadly supported the proposal. A large number of these submitters commented that cost recovery would be appropriate in certain or slash limited services uh, situations, sorry, where the services are not core police functions and where the benefit is only to an individual user or private organisation. So uh, of the 35 submitters opposed, or mostly opposed, to police introducing cost recovery for certain services, some were concerned that this could set a precedent for a range of police services uh, and uh, being user pays and that the charging could not be applied appropriately to public policing. One of the things we're a bit concerned about is this thin end of the wedge towards privatising uh, our police force. Another issue raised by some of those opposed to police recovering costs was the possibility of a cost recovery regime leading to inequitable treatment of paying customers versus non-paying customers. And we'd hate to see the situation in New Zealand where um, uh, the protection of the police 
uh, came at a price, and those people, such as my constituents up, constituents up in Te Tai Tokoro, who, who don't have a lot of money, the, uh, the level of policing that they received, or police service they received, would be different to those who do have a bit of money behind them. And uh, as has already been raised today, uh, the New Zealand Teachers Council was one organisation that did not uh, support this measure. Uh, this proposal. Uh, they say a vital part of the education safety path for children is the mandatory requirement in the Act that the Council carry out police vets for those applying to be registered as teachers to assist in determining whether an applicant is of good character and fit to be a teacher. And it has been mentioned already today, uh, as a former principal myself, we, we police vetted all staff, uh, not just teachers librarians, caretakers, uh, office people, uh, because we wanted to make sure that everybody was fit to work with children. Uh, the Teachers' Council says there should be no charge for police vetting for teachers because police vetting has a significant public benefit in accordance with the principles for exemption in the original uh, consultation document. They, uh, the police vetting is part of the primary functions of police and in no way is an additional service. Uh, the Teachers' Council is not a profit-generating company or organisation, and the cost of vets would fall directly on teachers or schools or on the council themselves. Now, uh, the, the equation, oh, there was an equation somewhere in, in, the, in the notes that said there's about 450,000, I think, uh, police vets in any given year. Uh, div <coughs> divide that well, basically, it came down to seven dollars seventy would be the cost per police vet, and um, you know that's that's fine to say now that it's seven dollars seventy. Who's to say that in years to come it doesn't become twenty seven dollars seventy or fifty dollars seventy, and it and it starts costing about the same as what we're hearing is in over in Australia there. Uh, the Teachers Council. Uh, said there are few, if any, further efficiencies to be generated in the police vetting system for teachers and charging will not reduce demand or costs incurred. And that's a great point. Just because we charge to recover costs for police vetting doesn't mean to say we're going to reduce the numbers of, of uh, police vets needed. Um, the Teachers' Council are opposed to any proposal that would, that would make the Council subject to cost recovery for a process that statute requires it to undertake. So here is the statute that says you must uh, vet all teachers. So that's the statute saying that, and then they're saying, but now you, you've got to pay for it. And again, as, as has been mentioned today, where are those costs going to fall? Are they going to fall on schools? You know, we know that schools are underfunded as they are. We know that schools struggle uh, with money as it is, and here we are, we're going to place another cost on them. Uh, the, the, so there are 40,000 police vets a year through the Teachers' Council. Um, that's an average of more than 3,300 per, per month, and, and it's about 13% of the number of uh, vets that, that, are, um, each, that, are, that are made each year. So 13% of any police vetting comes through the Teachers' Council uh, schools wanting to have staff police vetted, Mr. Um, Mr. Speaker. You know this. I agree with the Teachers' Council on that. This is actually part of the core function of the police in terms of maintaining public safety. Under Section 9 of the Policing Act 2008, one of the core functions is maintaining public safety, and this is actually about maintaining the safety of the most vulnerable in our society. That is our young people who are in schools. Um, it's about crime prevention as well, because if we can stop people uh, with dubious uh, histories against, uh, of offending against children, then, we're, then they're actually preventing crime as well, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we support this bill uh, to go to select committee. I think there's a lot of uh, debate that needs to be had around the bill. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked. Uh, um, Organisations need to submit. And, and have their voices heard, uh, but the, the Labour Party does support this bill uh, to, the, uh, to Select Committee. Kia ora.